son <laughs> after hitting his head with a GoPro. We don't know. All Back credibility, you, Susan. gone. None left after oh, that. Oh, in- inaccurate news. They're going to ban us. There's not a there's not a Formula One racer that's now going to or a MotoGP guy that will ever listen to you again, John. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> this is your host, Johnny Hopper, and I'm here with Dr. Fauci and then Coach Rob. Sh- show us show us your shirt, Fauci. <laughs> and then, you know, it's it's got the wrong 2024 is where it needs to be. I wouldn't even mind if it was uh, his his son that gets elected. But anyway, we are here for... The pre-race show, the best pre-race show where there's no <laughs> sponsors. It's just all candid, and we can say what we want to say. So we're going to start with the 450 class, and we're just going to go top three, <clears throat> and then a bonus. That's why I've got four fingers up here. So three, then a bonus. And so one, two, three, what? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long and, and just that so that you, everybody is aware that um i rescheduled these guys already you know with no heads up with like an hour heads up and then i was even 20 minutes late uh so i i'm really bad about being punctual so i do apologize you guys but we will start with coach because it is i believe what is it nine o'clock where you're at right now uh 9 30 yep 9 30 i'd be already asleep right now oh. all right don't Coach. worry about his time, Johnny. You just take your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cooksy, I, I, I did. <laughs> Get a coffee. Do you need a break, Johnny? Like, we've been doing this for three minutes. Would you like a break? Well, not, not until 15 minutes because okay, the sorry, whole stimulation, sorry. you can only stay focused for so long. So you can actually be more productive if you take 15-minute breaks, right? You know. Anyway, Coach, who is your number three for the 2022 vet nationals you guys are going to get really frustrated with me here tonight because i've got an if then attached to all three places and starting but here's the reason why here's the reason why starting with number three is kenny roxon excuse me is ken roxon truly healthy because if he is i've got him at third if he's not, I've got Anderson in third. So I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a either or for each one of these places going forward. When you I, when you go to the sports book, do you say, hey, I'm gonna bet this, but if this happens, I want this bet. And all right, what well, they- if I'm if I'm laying hard money down, I'm going rock, I'm going Anderson in third. Okay. That that's where we're going, you know, with society is oh wait, 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 no, 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 cancel culture, uh, da, 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 what was right? Well, it's not even so much cancer culture as much as let's just be honest and transparent. What are we dealing with, right? We can sit and do a whole show on the lack of transparency. So so you're not sport. being for sure. You're saying it's Kenny, but then if it's not Kenny, it's Anderson. Yeah, I was gonna go off of what Chris said. If you if we're having to lay hard money down, I just can't go with Roxon in third because of what we've seen. The last two years, not so much when he was injured. We all completely understand that. But if you look at this un, unexplained exit from Supercross, once again, getting healthy, got to deal with some things. And he comes out with, he was pretty adamant, full of, you know, foul language, which I have no problem with. But, you know, the point is, is I feel like he's trying to make a declaration and a statement that he's back. I just don't trust that he's back because we don't really know why he exited Supercross. We hear relationship with Honda is not good. Is this a contract obligation? He's got to at least start it. Does he got to get an X amount of rounds in without huge financial ramifications? I'm going to go with Anderson. Looked really good in Supercross. Um, the big argument with all these bikes are going to be, does Anderson gel with the bike outdoors as well as he did indoors? If so, heck, you could put him in first, but we're speculating without one one lap around at the track, so I'm going to go with Anderson in third. The, the whole Kenny thing is incredibly interesting because i i almost think that chances are he's not going to finish the season <laughs> you know yeah. he's probably going to win maybe the first few rounds and then he's just going to fall off the face of the planet where he can't do a, a 30 minute moto to save his life which is a bummer it'd be nice if he just went out and just explained but as matt frazier said in his book is there's a reason why you keep this stuff hidden because people use it against you and I know sure. we can all say that we want to know what's wrong with him, but if it actually is something serious, which more than likely it probably is, if Absolutely. you've got an elite athlete like that not being able to to finish motos when he has the speed. And then I feel like Kenny kind of has the Craig effect 
where he's fast enough to win, but then he's such a good, clean rider that he doesn't kind of push back on people. And so I think people think that they can push him around. So uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I guess it's Anderson is a good pick. Anderson is a good pick. Fauci, number three. Okay. Number three, I'm going to go with your defending champion, Dylan Ferrandez. And I'll tell you why. Because he's been out. He didn't look that good. Last year, it really came together, and his starts weren't that good, but he charged through. But he was dealing with a different competition. Like, let's see, you know, the three-time champion, Eli Tomac, wasn't, like, he really wasn't there last year. I don't even count last year. This year, he's going to be there. factory parts. Equipment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't getting them, and he's got them now. He's got everything he needs now. And for that reason... And the fact that Dylan hasn't been racing, and I do think that matters. I think gate drops matter. I just don't see him putting it together. I, I mean, I, you're talking razor thin between the top three. And just to to comment more on the Roxon deal, I have Roxon outside as one of my bonus guys. But did you guys hear him talk about he had the Fauci virus um, in December, and it messed with his brain? And I, I, you know, I suffered for a long time with the long haul. And it messes with your brain. And I know some people close to him, and, and there was a lot of depression and the anger. And then that's maybe where the split came from Honda. Maybe he is good. Uh, I, I wouldn't bet on it, like living in Vegas and putting hard money. I'm not putting hard money on rocks and that he's fixed. But if he's happy, look out. Yeah. He could easily be a top guy. Like if he, if he wins the championship this year, are we all going to be shocked? Not at all. If he doesn't finish, are we going to be shocked? Not at all. Yeah, so I mean, it's just kind of what we've known, and and it sucks that such like literally one of the all time talents is dealing with some stuff that just it's brutal. But mm -hmm. the sport is brutal. So yeah, you're only good as your your last race. Well, because I am just thinking outside the box here, and you know I'm going to be the man if my predictions end up being correct. So for that reason, I'm going to say Dungey for number three. I thought about that. I don't think that's a bad pick. Not at all. And, and, and the reason... what you said, Chris, none of us would be surprised, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, Go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. He's the diesel. He's all hopped up on all this new coffee that he has. <laughs> yeah, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, what he's it's, on. It's, it's pretty good stuff. Ryan, I'm picking you as number three. I'm buying your stuff. I need a discount code, dude. H hook, hook me up. Oh, but no, all, 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 all seriousness is... Um, we talk about, or at least I've talked a little bit about the flow. When you're riding a motorcycle, you're in the flow. You're not in the thinking mind. You're just in the, the active mind. You're in the present moment. And a rider like Dungey, who has been at the top of his game for so long, once he retires, he's probably going like, oh, what do I do now? Like, this was my stress relief, even though it created a lot of stress for me but I've done this for so long, like, what is my purpose in life? So it makes sense that he's coming back because really his only gnarly injury was the neck and being scared that potentially he could get paralyzed. But he hasn't had a catastrophic injury like Kenny or anything. I, I know he's hit his head quite a bit. I mean, you, you can't go through racing this much without hitting your head. But everyone has given him uh, saying that, 2016 was his last time that he won the Outdoor Nationals, and he's not going to be able to make anything happen. And I'm going, it's going to make Kenny look really bad if he beats him. And he's the diesel. And I think that he hasn't lost the speed. I think once he has the white equipment underneath him, that he's going to be consistent. And he said it himself that he doesn't want to come back to racing if he doesn't think he can win. And if you look at all the people that have already injured... You know, half the field is kind of already out when it comes to the factory riders. They're trying to fill in people. So it wouldn't surprise me to have him just show up and start doing well and getting some confidence. So you guys kind of agree, not agree? No, no, no. Absolutely agree with you. And it was funny you, you talked about the retirement. I wrote an article back when Dungey retired talking about how there's a hard transition to regular life. You should have read the comments. People were on my ass. He'll be happy. He'll ride off in the sunset. He's got this gorgeous wife. He's going to have kids. I'm like, but there's a difference. Like when you drop your purpose, like as a professional racer, these guys have everyone around them catering to him, this, that, the other. And then all of a sudden to be, I mean, not to say that he's a guy, but when he shows up the races and everyone's catering to Marv and he's just walking around the truck and that actually, 
it's hard. It's a hard transition to make, no matter who you are. Everyone says it. McGrath said it. Carmichael's. Everyone said that there's always. It's a tough transition. So, um, who is yeah. the F one champion that uh, starts with an M? Ended up getting buried in an avalanche. You're talking about uh, no, the one that crashed and had the GoPro. No, 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 no. God, he he's like. He's got a son he was racing. The, um, he's an MXGP guy, right? No, no, no. The I'm talking F1, 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 oh, F1 car racing. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Follow uh, them. I don't know a lot of those guys. I know Schumacher. Michael Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, it, it, an it is, it, he hit his head with the GoPro on. With a GoPro. I, see, I thought he. Fuck. Well, no, Johnny, he was skiing. Let me, yes, he was skiing. Yes. But he had a helmet with a GoPro on. Okay, so it was. It, but it was a skiing accident. And yes, it was. Basically, a skiing okay. The the digression is over. That the dude retired with millions and millions and as opposed to spending time with his family he kept doing stuff that was keeping that adrenaline pumping and that's end up kind of his downfall as he as he died and you take these guys that are elite uh, he's athletes still alive. <laughs> sorry sorry hopper he's still alive his wife takes care of him and he, this this was this accident after, so he won all those championships, retired, then came back, but he didn't do real well. But yeah, then he still did lots of like triathlons. He almost died scuba diving one time. He went too far out. Um, well, so he, the other, you know, going back to, we're still talking about Dungey here. The other thing to keep in mind too, is there's no way in hell Dungey would have shown up if he wasn't on pace with the other guys. You know, whether you want to laugh at stopwatch nationals or not, there's no way he'd go out there if he was five seconds off the pace. Um, I haven't talked to anybody, but I'm I'm venturing that he probably was on pace or even faster than the current guys, which just solidified his motivation. And we know Dungy, when he locks in mentally, good luck. Now take one thing one step further, though, with Dunge. You know, when you stop and you think about the idea that with he knows his routine, he knows what works, he knows what doesn't work. Think about when he was in his prime. No disrespect to the teams. We've only got 12 factory riders in the 450 class this year. If we go through that list, at Husky, you've got RJ and Shane. Don't think that's going to be much of a challenge for him. At KTM, he's got Caroli on his hands for two, whatever, six, eight, whatever rounds he goes. He's only got AP under KTM. At Yamaha, he's got his hands full with Tomac, Ferrandis, and Craig. Cowie, has got Anderson and Savachi. Savachi won't be an issue. Gas Gas is Barsha, and then we've got Honda with Roxon and Sexton. You look at the number of people he needs to beat to get to where Johnny says he's going to be third, I don't think it's unrealistic at all. He's a beast. He knows what he's capable of, and he would have never shown up if he hadn't done his homework coming in. Ryan is a very, very astute businessman. He's a great marketer. He's very, very quiet and humble, but he's brilliant. I spent lots of time with him. He's brilliant between him and his wife. He's got good people around him. It's not far fetched for him to be third. Good call, Johnny. Well, I mean, after my Michael Schumacher, you're right. He he did fell and hit his head <laughs> on a rock, and he was with his son Mick. So I'm actually going to leave that in there to make myself look like a dumbass because I had no idea what I'm talking about. So we might be wrong about the whole Dungey thing, but I'm still going with number three. And so to keep the ball rolling, Coach. Uh, I'm going to need you to say something stupid with number two, okay? <laughs> so, well, like, you know, Bogle, right? Yeah. No, no offense, nothing against Bogle. I think he's a, a, a darn good rider. He just needs a I can't believe you button. tried to bury Michael Schumacher. He's still alive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I have to go with uh, number two, the opposite of what Chris said. I'm going to go with Ferrandis because I think he's fresh. Um, I do agree. He looked like he was on struggle bus in Supercross. He kind of reminded me of the Cooper Webb situation with Marv. Marv could make the bike look good. Cooper just didn't gel with it. Doesn't mean Coop's inept or incapable or anything else. I just think Ferrandis just didn't gel with that in the Supercross environment. I think he's fresh. He tapped out early enough where he could really invest in that uh, testing and setup and being a defending champion. He's got a lot of motivation. We just can't forget Ferrandis outdoors. I mean, we all have amnesia, right? We watch Supercross and we can't remember what happened six months ago. We can't, we just cannot forget how much of a dominant factor he was. To your point, Chris, shitty starts still came through the pack. 
with a field that was pretty, I'm not going to say it was stacked, right? I mean, by the end of the season, we haven't had a season indoors or out that's finished as strong as it starts. I don't say that to be naive. We understand there's always a nutrition rate, but Ferrandis is a beast and he's got a lot of championships under his belt, meaning he knows how to manage a series, just like Cooper's done a great job with that. And I think he's going to be very tough to beat. Um, so I've got him as my second because he's going to come in fresh, hungry as a defending champion with a little bit more time for setup. I think he's going to be tough. Yeah, he's definitely going to be right there. And like I said, the top three, four, five are going to be way out there. And then they're going to see a big gap. My number two is I'm going to go with the theme of green, like behind Hopper's head there. And I'm going with my boy, Jason Anderson. Even though he probably doesn't like me, I don't care. <laughs> he's still one of my favorite guys. I, whatever he's doing this year, he got married. He's got the mojo. He feels it. He's really, really good right now. He's in shape. And he's got, he almost seems like he's like he's got this second wind, like he's got something to prove. And the fact that he's never won a 450 national, I would almost guarantee that's going to change. I would put a lot of money that he's going to win at least one. I don't see him winning the title, but I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, he's going to be right there. So he's, that's he's what incredibly I got. fluid. When you watch him on the bike, it, it's crazy just his flow. And it seems like these tall riders it seems to be like a transition as the guys are getting i i don't know it just it just seems like the taller the guys are the better they're doing nowadays with the new riding technique where we've got the toes way pointed in on your toes all the time and these guys can just move and and move that bike around and uh dylan it was a surprise that he was winning last year for me it was a big surprise and because of how well he did Coach and I were like, hey, he's going to win the Supercross. And then uh, we, we kind of ate our own words there. So for me, I want to say Eli is going to get second is is what You're, I'm going to do. You are such a hater, John. Dude, no, I'm oh not hating gosh. Eli. I'm not, Every he, time. Let me let me guess. He's done. He's retiring. Let's see. What else? What else um, we got here, dude, Johnny? Dude, he, he signed a, just a Supercross-only deal with Star for next year. So this is his last season um in moto and i know he probably wants to win the championship to go out because what would it be four would it be four championships it'll be four titles for him and i think he's going to be really hard to beat however he's got that mcl where you're probably not going to want somebody to bump up against you and you don't want to twist it kind of a thing and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to eat my own words here because everybody is going to say tomac everybody is going to say tomac you guys both of you are probably going to say tomac for that reason, I am saying he's going to be second because I'm going to be the the outlier, the dude that doesn't know what he's talking about. And then when predictions happen, everybody will then point to this and be like, wow, <laughs> he must know a thing or two because uh, I'll have to Google some more, find out who's still alive and in, in writing. But... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you call Schumacher up and ask him who he's picking? But no, for that reason is I think I think Eli is just wants to – I thought he was honestly going to retire. I, I really did. I thought he was going to retire. Yeah. And I, I heard you back when you said that the last four seasons, Johnny. <laughs> it's going to come true at, at some point. Same thing with my Bitcoin prediction is it's going to be over 100K at some point. We just have to wait. Um, but no, I, I think he's going super cross mm -hmm. only for a reason. And he's probably getting a boatload of money from Star. And I'm losing Fauci over here because Fauci's like, Johnny, you just keep talking. Pay attention, Cooksy. <laughs> Pay attention. I um, fixed my mic. Sorry, I was speaking to I was you. A little so, too loud. Fine. Since on, you guys disagree on. with me that much, Coach, who who's your number one? Who's your number well, one? Well, I've got Tomac number one with a caveat because if we go back, like I said, if if we're gonna play the what if, I'm gonna go Ferrandis, Anderson, Roxon, and the reason being is I don't know that Tomac's 100. percent so that's what makes it so difficult. But like Chris said earlier, if I'm going to lay money down on a bet, I'm going to go Tomac, and here's why. We know outdoors, I think you could put a Hodaka underneath him, and the guy's going to rip. I mean, outdoors, that's his playground. He's never really been off the grid with that. For him to take something, i.e. Supercross, and turn it into what he's done the last two seasons, especially this year, changing colors, turning it right back around, we know what he's capable of outdoors. And I, again, this is just my opinion. I feel it's harder to take a supercross bike and excuse me, motocross and take it to supercross use Ferrandis as an example. We saw what he could do outdoors. It just did not parlay over to supercross 
taking what he did in Supercross, Tomac, and taking that to outdoors, I personally believe, studying history as much as I have on moto, I think it's a much easier transition to take that and make it work for outdoors. He's got a longer moto. They've got, if you look at the way qualifying is set up, look at the way the motos are, you know, he can go out there and not really agree with the bike, but he ends up in third or fourth and then come out and just stamp the second moto with a few adjustments. And I think that format really lends itself to Tomac because if you see what he did in Supercross, he'd make a small adjustment. It, he'd go one or two ways with the, the heat race, and then he'd come out and all of a sudden he'd just kill it in the, in the main event. I think with Tomac, with the longer motos, two-moto format, it's going to lend itself. My only question, my only tap out is he's either going to go the distance or he's going to go two rounds and go, you know what, the knee's not going to allow me to do it, which is going to make me look like an idiot having Tomac first. Ferrandez second and Anderson third. If Tomac taps out, I go Ferrandez, Anderson, and Roxon. So you're saying he may pull out? I just, you know, you guys have I been mean, around I, knee injuries. I don't, I don't know if he wants three kids. So you, you might be right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the problem that you run into is, you know, he's he's done a good job. He didn't race that last round, which bought him an extra week, which was brilliant. But I don't know. I mean, we're never going to be told the exact truth of the magnitude of the injury. But everybody listening and ourselves included, we know how painful a knee injury can be. We know what that pain in the knee does to your confidence. Like you said, you're worried about somebody coming in and kind of bullseyeing it and nailing it. A couple good pops, we may see Tomac tap out because, I mean, I don't think the listeners are going to be surprised. Why would Tomac stay in? If his knee's jeopardized and he knows he's not going to win, and I don't know, you guys may know the contracts better than I do, Outside of third place, what are the bonuses really worth? Is Tomac going to weigh the cost benefit and go? You know what? Well, and I the, go get this fixed. All the psychological and... repercussions when it comes to assholes. Like I, I would say, I'm an asshole. I wouldn't say you guys are, but you know, from what people say on I, I the internet. I think I qualify. Oh, yeah, you you are Fauci, so you, you do qualify. No, but but coach, you're no, you're, you're too smart anti. to be an asshole. Um, but you're too all, kind. All, all, all the psychological issues when it comes to people saying stuff on the internet, and then not to mention as any kind of a, a rider, I know that these guys all have mental coaches, but still, if he's the champion for Supercross, he's going to want to defend that number one and where all the big money is, so it wouldn't make sense for him to continue to ride around in fifth place or something. I, I think we are seeing a huge transition. Well, and we You mean just like you did last year, Johnny, with the number one? It doesn't matter what what happened last year. You know, history I'm does. I'm kidding. Yeah, you just you're lucky that we're not in the same room. <laughs> I know. I probably got beat up. Come over, leg chop me. <laughs> I'm I'm five five nine man five nine ready to go ready to go. Five I, nine's I, the guy I worry about because he has a lot of friends. <laughs> no, no, the no. It's because that guy's probably had to fight a hundred times, especially with your mouth. I can't imagine you've never been in a big fight. No, no, not really. Nope. Liar. I don't believe that at all. There's no chance. I mean, there's, there's been a, a few altercations that I've had, but um, you can only say so much before. And then, you know, what I found, you're, you're getting me digressing. If, if you have a big <laughs> mouth, right, and people like, I've, I've gotten in some altercations with guys that are like seven feet tall, you know, they're just, just huge men. And then you just take this little thing out and you're like, boom. You're on camera. They they just go like, "What the hell's going on here?" And then it, it kind of diffuses the situation. But anyway, there, there there's some more situations we'll talk about. I'm trying to remember what I was saying. With sorry, yeah, you, you totally lost my totally my train of sorry, here. sorry, sorry. Yeah, see, <laughs> my bad, my bad, Hopper. Okay, well, yeah. think about it, and I'll just go with my number one, which you guys obviously know. It's Eli Tomac, and I'm going to go a different direction. I. Wait, what? there's a caveat, right? There's a caveat. No, no caveat. I'm going with Tomac. Okay. He's going to win. I don't think his knee's nearly as bad as you guys think. And I'm basing this off my own personal knee injuries. I've torn ACLs, uh, PCLs, MCLs. The only one that was able to heal without surgery that was somewhat reasonable was the MCL. The easiest, easiest ligament to brace with a knee brace or something is the MCL. I just don't think it's going to be an issue. And the fact that he clinched one race early, I think he probably could have raced Salt Lake, but he went, well, let's just make sure I'm all right. So I think he's going to come in ready. And I think that the fact that he skipped Salt Lake to get ready shows you how focused he is on this title. And, and I think it's his. 
Okay, so I remember what I was going to say while you were talking because I wasn't listening that that well. I'm I'm I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I like this. He's honest. No, I I agree. Yes, I appreciate it. I I, I agree with you. I. I don't think that the knee is that I saw him at the whole shot nationals or whatever the stopwatch nationals at Glen Helen. And he looked fast as fuck. Looked the fast as fuck. Like the little meme that's going around fast as fuck. He, he looks like he's probably going to be the guy that, um, is got the speed to win. I just feel like he's going to retire. Not the, he's going to retire at some point. He's just he's going to he's already done motocross so many times, and like nobody likes the motocross. At least thirty minute motos plus two in hot, humid stuff. It's just it's a bitch. So at least it, at least it pays well. No, and speaking of paying well, they've actually raised the licensing fee because of inflation. It, it went from like three twenty five, three fifty to like three seventy five now. You know, well, they didn't race the purse. <laughs> no, they they did not. You know, so your your dollar for dollar is is getting paid less. But I think that there is a transition that's happening for guys to want to continue to race long, like somebody like Tomac, so he doesn't retire. Is going supercross only. I think we're going to see a lot more guys going supercross only, and you can see that already with where the money is in motocross, as it's transferring away and it's going to supercross. At least we think it's going to super cross at least they're retaining the majority of the endorsements and where motocross is just kind of backstage guys so i think motocross is going to turn maybe into like the canadian nationals and the privateer nationals where the supreme riders and teams are going to be just doing super cross only and i think the the skill sets are so different it's the same reason why we get our ass kicked by the gp riders is because they do it 24 7 365 where we spend six seven eight months out of the year practicing for supercross and then we happen to just do this motocross thing because if you're decent at the finesse that's required for supercross you're going to be okay at motocross you might not be really ready to hang it out but you're going to be okay so anyway that's going to lead me all the way to my number one which is going to be caroli i'm not it's not going to be caroli just just <laughs> You don't know if he's going to race the entire series, but that would be really cool if it was Caroli. I'm going to say how great. Andy. I was going to say how great would that be? That would be dude. That would epic. be awesome. It'd be great or humiliating. I'm not sure what. <laughs> both, <laughs> both, both. Yeah. Dude, I was watching some videos of him. He's coming around the corner, you know, Assen's hanging out, and he's got the elbow down, and he's just hauling f and ass. I'm just like, dude, go old man, go old man. Like, oh, that that goofy smile and that gorgeous wife, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 um, it's gonna be Anderson. I think Anderson is gonna get it done because if. Personally, I think that the Supercross should have been a lot closer closer than what it was, but because of certain situations that happened that were out of his control, plus some of the silly penalties that were involved, I, I think he should have been a, a lot closer to, to Tomac, where Tomac would have at least had to race that last race. We've all talked about changing the rules up a bit so that the last race is the climax of everything it's not like just the entrance to you know i'm trying to do say a, a, a crappy joke here you know with with popping the cherry with a1 that's the <laughs> the the highlight of supercross is a1 and then you go to show all to downhill utah. from there yeah utah and you're like oh dang it man like I, I need to grab some viagra or something to keep it going because i mean this is the last set like there's there's no point in doing this really but what, dude, what do you with guys all these think? hold on hold on with all this sexual and is your wife been out of town or something <laughs> dude <laughs> Well, this no, is he has a growing little little girl. She can I, be in town. And it still doesn't matter. Cooksy, I, I told you I've got six bedrooms. We're trying to fill them up. So okay, stay busy, my man. Stay is busy. Your idea, pages. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, I did. You might want to inform her on your agenda here. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually her idea, you know, so like, of course. Well, I'm good gonna, on you. Why are you talking man, to us? I feel like uh, I should edit this out, too, because this, you know, fuck no, it. We're no gonna editing, put this in no there. editing. So. We don't need. Just don't let Paige see it, because she'll whip your ass. Oh, dude, she's she's Mexican. She's full of fire. Like, I already see it in the little girl, man. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm screwed. I'm royally screwed. And speaking of being screwed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. 
the bonus. We've got to have the bonus. And the way we're structuring the bonus is this could just be like somebody you think is going to be in the top three, somebody you think that could still win. Just bonus, right? If, if you could scratch off a name and replace a rider, that's what this bonus is, right? Okay. Bonus. Okay, coach. Bonus. Yeah, my, my bonus is definitely Christian Craig. I, uh, I think he's got so much to prove. He's going to Husqvarna. Um, it's no secret Star Yamaha has a pretty good reputation. When somebody's vacating, do we see the same bike that uh, everybody else is running? That's, uh, that's to be seen. But uh, we know Christian Craig can haul the mail in a 450. We know there's really nothing that gets thrown at him that he can't handle. Um, I, he's my, I won't say even a dark horse. I mean, like you said, I wouldn't be surprised to see him mixing it up in the top three every other weekend. New I think he needs to gain a little weight, but other than that, yeah. no. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be all part of the game and figuring out how much is too much and too little. And he's got some good advice with uh, some counselors and some good mentors that'll tighten all that up. But I think this year will be, especially outdoors. I mean, think about how smart his agent was. How brilliant is it to get 250 indoors, 450 outdoors, zero expectation next year? Watch for him to be a title content. I'm not, I know people think I'm nuts. He's not a rookie by definition. He's gotten a lot of bad rap for being in the 250 class. We've all said it. Would you rather go pay to go racing or get paid to race? We all would do the same thing, given mm -hmm. the same opportunity. But think about all the expertise. Think about all the knowledge, every gate drop. He's managed the series, finally won the championship, got the monkey off his back. He's going. He has zero pressure this summer. Zero. Hold on. I got to go back to something you said right off the bat. You just kind of glossed over it, but to me, you, you buried the headline there. Yeah. Um, you s suspect that Star changes parts on bikes with guys exiting the team? Well, I mean, it's it's not a it's not a it's not something I've made up. I mean, it's it's been proven over and over again, and I think that's kind of one of the bad it's called things a about, budget. Cooks. Yeah. Sometimes and, you, you can't know, get all the fancy parts. I'm just checking. I just, that's a big so story. So if, if there's I a figured, big dildo on one can't... bike and you needed to put it okay. on the other bike, you, you, do you watch it so sunny in, Do you watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No, I don't. When Mac rides the bike, the dildo. <laughs> uh, if anyone watches it, that's your bike, Johnny. You need one of those. You need Mac's bike. <laughs> I oh, mean, man. it sounds like it's got a lot of horsepower to it. It's got something to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm right there with you. Uh, coach, not not that we're trying to make this not. not I agree too. I just had to yeah. talk about the bike because that's, that's a big deal, and the fact that people accused Johnny when Johnny mentioned that about Eli at Kawasaki, people were like, "What?" Just freaking out. Like you were, you set the internet on fire. But you're right. This happens all the time. Talk to Kadrowski. Talk to these old pros. They've all had situations where this has happened. Hopefully, it doesn't happen to Christian because I. I do believe he'll be right there, and I think he has a good enough relationship with the star guys that I don't see it happening. So, well, that no, that, that star team is gonna definitely have a a battle going with who's gonna be the top guy under the tent there in the 450 class. Because Craig, I do think that he's a damn good 450 rider, and he could surprise people with some moto wins. And he's fairly consistent when it comes to being on the bike because he doesn't get hurt that often. I mean, he's got a, some finesse when it comes to crashing. You know, mm -hmm. ask Freeze. Freeze has tried to take his ass multiple times, and he just, like, <laughs> undoes a bubble and somehow just lands it. No injury whatsoever. So, um, Well, I, let me just say one thing real quick to your point, Chris. When people, let's call it other podcasts, lose their absolute minds about something that we have said, that shows you how close to the fire we've gotten, and they're going to do everything they can to try to spin the narrative that we're completely inept don't know what we're talking about because the truth of what we're talking about, we're way too close to it. Let the listeners deduct their own opinion with that. Let's move on. Yeah, that was a great one, Coach. I, yeah, Craig, I I could easily see a star one, two, three. But I'm shocked that neither of you guys, because I had a hard time leaving him out of my top three. I know who Chase, you're going with. I Chase agree. Sexton, Chase like he's Sexton. so good. And if I could cross off any of those three, I'd just plug Chase Sexton in and one, two, or three. Dude, I you wouldn't said be hard. You said plug. 
<laughs> the dildo bike. We're on a roll. <laughs> okay, here. Johnny. Could, I wish I had, if I had a mute mic button, I'd just hit it right now. Like, leave it alone, bro. Maybe we should just take a break. You go, oh. go, go, rub one out, and then come back. Hey, so. hey, we at least can say we go places that other podcasts aren't willing to go. Let's just leave it at that. You know? <laughs> Johnny sure does. <laughs> Johnny's on a roll. Poor Been there, done Johnny. that. Oh boy. Okay. But your Where was point, though with Sexton though, I mean, the problem that we run into is what kept him from being. I mean, I, I, I apologize. I don't. I didn't look at the notes. Where did Sexton end up in Supercross? Fifth, sixth. I don't know, but I consider his season a success because he got that win. And oh, absolutely. Dude, but he should have had is three plus wins. Two, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Boy, that's, geez. but that's my point. We go outdoors. We've got twice as many motos. We got a longer moto. That potential to show those mistakes, unfortunately, if we just go off of history, which we've done it with every one of the riders today, it's pretty hard to argue that Sexton will find a way to throw it away. Coach we all hard. agree. Super finesse, <laughs> super smooth. <laughs> You know, we also understand that, you know, he wants to be the top guy at Honda. So if he can, he gosh, here we go. if he, if he could outlast Roxon, right, he's going to, it's going to be a good season for him. But well, uh, it, endurance is not an issue compared to Roxon. <laughs> Dude, that's another he'll, thing. He'll, he'll definitely Honda. outlast him. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Johnny. Johnny. You, you've got no, no, no. Of... This is great. This is great. No, well, you've got to follow this one up. Like, both just, of you guys done. took my orgy contendents between uh, Sexton and uh, Coach. Who, 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 who's your Craig. your guy again? Craig. Craig. Yeah. Craig. Nothing sexual about Craig. <laughs> Seppi's got like, more children like, than we do. No, nobody named Johnson out there. Except he's got more children than we do. No, hey, although, okay, Rick, since... although, although Mr. Johnson is going to be your announcer at the first round. Rick Johnson. I'm going to be very curious to see how he does because, you know. He's great, man. He's very good. Yeah. yeah I think he's going to be really impressive. I think we need to bring back David Bailey, too. They tried. I, if you, Yeah, I think they've tried. Mm. Unfortunately, David's dealing with a shoulder injury. Um, you know, with everything else he's been dealing with, he got he tore his shoulder up getting out of his, his van. And you can imagine being in a wheelchair with one shoulder. That's just mm-hmm. no game. So my thoughts and prayers to him. And uh, I know he's. He's struggling. It's hard. Well, Coombs, Coombs said he's going to do the last round. That'd be awesome. Yeah, he That'd said he's the, in fair. Hall. That would be awesome. He's the best. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to say old man Caroli. I know he's not going to race the whole series, but let's just watch him. No, do he something. might. Yeah. If, if he starts doing well, he might just say, oh, these Americans don't know how to ride motocross, so I'm just going to put it to him. So uh, for my bonus, I'm going to say Caroli. It was between him and... I'm just thinking maybe Barsha, but oh, I'm going to go Caroli. Caroli sounds like a, a much better headline story, which would be nice to see. Can he can he adapt to the one-day format, though? Because in the GPs, you got all that practice on Saturday. They do that qualifying race, which is like 20 minutes. Yeah, it happens very quick just in, in one day. However, he is, unlike Dungey, he's been riding for a while. So I think he's going to be more apt. He might even be more prepared than most of the American guys because he just rides motocross all the time, even though that he did retire. And still, I think it's going to be different. But the tracks are a lot different. And unfortunately, it's, it's something like Tomac. Tomac rides really well when the tracks get really bad. I think Crowley rides really well when the tracks get really bad. And American tracks don't get as bad as over in Europe. But that is all you, we have. Johnny, Johnny, let me ask you a quick question. Would okay. you rather be an American trying to go the MXGP format? Or would you rather be an MXGP rider trying to learn the American format based on the two of you and your race experience at that elite level? I think that probably the MXGP format is probably easier because you've got more time to adjust and do the bikes and um, it's just, it's drawn out. It's not so fast. Like, I think that's why the MXGP guys got the... I'm lost for words here, but no, they got like the nickname for being kind of slow and steady and build up where the American guys were just ready, aim, fire, boom, because everything happens so fast. And I think the GP guys have now kind of adapted to going a lot faster, quicker, but still, I think the having a longer format just makes things easier. It's less stressful. So but, we'll but see think how. about it though. You just articulated that the American tracks are not as gnarly as the out, uh, the GP tracks. So if you take that in, does do we get enough of an, an offset where he can go to a track that's not quite as bad as Lomel 
and get it dialed in a shorter period of time, even though the format is really, like you said, harder to go that direction than go this direction. Probably, but the track's but easier. you're missing the caveat when it comes to the other variable with all the other riders have ridden these tracks for so many years, so long, that they've got the upper hand. That's true. Still. Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, it'll be good. Before you, we are you, interrupted, this is all we have for the... 450 prediction if you want to see the next video we're going to have it on cooksy's channel so it's going to be in the description and you're going to have to move your happy ass over to his channel to watch us three debate some more so do you guys hey, are we going are we going peacock to mav are we going mav to nbc <laughs> where are we going where do you we're want us to go John? Hopper, we're not going to make it that complicated no okay. there's going to be a, make sure. a, a point click boom that's where I you're going to be i think our listeners be. are tired of going to four places to i'm watch i'm even mudders. confused so with, let's so let's go with it. the lowest rated one let's stick them all on mav tv there you go okay. hey yeah. hey hey when that's the only choice you have you take what you can get man you guys are such pessimists not Pes pessimist, just hey look. <clears throat> I gotta add my tradition. This we're, we're, is your this is your moneymaker, man. You gotta I say I was I was a little bitch and didn't step up and just brop when no, Cooksy and how when look, we were I talking. Shut these two squirrels down. Let me give you the traditional. And you gotta say Johnny F and Hopper. That's your new mantra. It's Johnny F why, and why, Hopper. Why don't you say Johnny? I'll say F and and then Cooksy, you say Hopper. Sure. And then, then we all brop, right? Nope, you brop. Nope, because they'll get pissed that you, yeah, you Chris brop. and I fuck it up. Oh, oh, okay, <clears> this okay, is your okay, brop. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, okay, it's we're... a 450 class, so you got to say, hey, there's a 450 brop. Plan, plan. Get really throaty. My daughter is probably sleeping, so I'm, she's probably going to wake up here. But go, go, coach. Johnny. Effin. Hopper. Bro, 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 bro. Headbang, headbang. Oh. You know, most people, they end the video before that happens. So.